Welcome to Capital and Professionals Monthly Economic Update. I'm Andrew Stark, and today we're speaking with AMP Capital's Chief Economist Shane Oliver about the recent plunge in global markets, his key themes for 2018, and the RBA's February policy update. Shane, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the program. The pullback in shares over the last week or two has generated a great deal of concern. Can you take us through some of the drivers behind the fall in share prices? I think there's a few factors involved. Obviously, the trigger has been a reassessment, particularly in the US, regarding how much inflation will rise, how quickly the Fed will tighten, and how much bond yields will rise. And that partly came on the back of a stronger than expected wage outcome in the US. So US wages growth spiked dramatically from 2.5% to 2.9%. Well, not really much movement. But anyway, that generated a bit of excitement. And then, of course, on top of that, um, we've got a long way in the US without a decent correction. The US share market had gone a record 310 days uh, without having a 3% or greater pullback. And of course, that's rather unusual. In fact, the last decent correction was just prior to Donald Trump being elected. So there was a degree of vulnerability there that had built up. And finally, it seems that lots of people were betting that volatility would continue to go down as it had over the course of the last year or so. And they, they assumed that would continue. Beats me why, but that's what they were betting on. And of course, uh, when volatility spiked, um, they had to close those positions down. So they're called short vol trades or short volatility trades. And of course, that uh, closing down of those positions meant a ricochet effect back to the share market, which is probably, probably why we had a few days where the US share market came down very aggressively. So all of those factors have been involved, but the main fundamental one was an improvement in news coming out of the US on the Rogers front and the flow on of that to what the Fed might do, bond yields and so on. And of course, you might say, well, that's good news. It is actually good news. Um, but of course, many investors have been betting that interest rates would stay low forever. And of course, that was never gonna be the case. So there's a bit of an adjustment going on in markets. Sharp market falls with talk of billions of dollars being wiped off shares are stressful for investors. What would your advice be to financial advisors dealing with concerned clients? There's no doubt that the, uh, the sharp falls we've seen uh, can be quite stressful. Um, talk of billions being wiped off. Of course, we never hear when the billions are put back on. And of course, uh, the, the billions that are created through the rising trend in the share market over time. And of course, a lot of the media focus is on uh, the Dow Jones index. And of course, the problem with an index is the higher it goes, a given percentage change will result in more being wiped off the index, which is almost meaningless. The best, best thing to focus on is the percentage change. But I think at the end of the day, there's several things worth focusing on for investors. The first one is to realise that corrections are normal. Go back through history, lots of pullbacks greater than 5%, lots of pullbacks greater than 10%. Um, they're quite normal, they're just the way the market operates. You look at 2012, look at 2013, 2014, even 2015, 16, they all had pullbacks, but against a rising trend. And some of those pullbacks were quite, were quite deep. So that's the first thing to note. Second point to note is that, of course, the losses being talked about are only paper losses. You only trigger a loss if you actually sell. And the trouble with selling on the back of a fall is that you're letting the emotion getting ahead of you. And you're better off getting a long-term approach and sticking to it rather than responding emotionally to something and selling when the market is down and locking in a loss. Another point on top of all of this is that you know, it's a very noisy environment out there. And I think it's very important for investors, for financial planners, for people like me to try and turn down some of that noise, often kind of difficult, um, but I think that's critically important in this environment. And I think to recognise that share markets provide a higher return for investors only because they're more volatility, they're more volatile. So that volatility is the price we pay to get that higher return. If you don't get the volatility, you won't get that higher return through time. So I think there are some points to sort of put this in context. And I think putting these events in context is critically important. Corrections happen. They're just the way markets operate. In your key themes for 2018, you predicted a further rise in global growth to around 3.9% with continuing low inflation and easy global monetary conditions keeping investment returns favourable. Do you still see global shares trending higher over the year? Yeah, our view hasn't really changed on this year. We, we thought that uh, it would be a more volatile year um, because we are coming into a situation where in the US inflation would start to rise and that would result in a more aggressive US Federal Reserve. And that with that volatility would become, we would see more constrained returns from equities. Because don't forget, last year was pretty good, particularly for global shares. Uh, the US share market rose around 20%, other markets buy more. So. We thought it would become a more constrained environment and that 
that remains our view. We've started to see the volatility. I think it's it's healthy to get a decent pullback in markets, but there's no real change in our view. Um, we still see a somewhat more aggressive Fed, but by the same token, other central banks are lagging behind. So in that sense, we're still in the sweet spot in the cycle. It's just a little bit less sweet than it was last year. Thanks for your time today, Shane. My pleasure. Thank you.